Hello, hello, my lovelies. Okay, so we are about to delve into the world of AI. Yes, I said it, AI. This is completely generated by artificial intelligence, and I created this on an app called Dream on the App Store. Now, it's free. Um, there is a paid version. I've never paid for it, and this is an image that I brought into Photoshop. I upsized it using Topaz Gigapixel and I, I just love it. I think it's so pretty. Let's go on. This one here, let's just get rid of this one first. Now this was made in Mid Journey. So I don't know how many of you know about Mid Journey, but Mid Journey is very similar to the dream app however it's way more robust and i do happen to have three invites that i can give to my lovely followers and i will tell you at the end of this video how to do it i love this here's another version here's another version and I've upsized all of these through Gigapixel, as you can see up here where it says Gigapixel. Um, and this is another one that I did. I used several different prompts, um, but I do love this one. But we're not actually going to deal with that one today. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new texture from all four of these. Okay, so let's get started. So. My favorite one is this one. I feel like it's just got all of the aspects and center point interest that I was looking for. And these ones here were, mm, they're okay. Like these are kind of blobby to me. And this one too, I mean, it's beautiful, but let's combine them all and make one fantastic, beautiful floral texture overlay. Okay. So because this is my main one, I'm going to actually drag my dream one onto this and we'll just start combining these. So I dragged it over. I am going to reduce. So as you can see, it just adds some lovely elements around the outside so if we turn it right off so what I'll do is I'll hold down my alter option key click mask and I'll paint on to the areas that I would prefer be included right so I'm always thinking about textures and overlays and different things that I can use for my artwork especially my portraits my fine art portraits and we're just going to add a little bit of this image in by painting on. Now I haven't done this prior to this video so you're going to explore with me at the same time. So nothing has been pre-recorded or pre-thought out. This is simply just me playing. I think that looks pretty good. Let's look at the before. See that's added some cinematic quality, some lighting, a little haze. I think it's beautiful. Okay, I'm loving this. Let's turn this one on. I'm gonna actually drag this layer up and thankfully my transform tool is working now because prior to this it was not. Um, so you can really minimize this and start painting on additional areas. So again, I'm going to invert this mask and using a white brush, I'm just going to paint a little bit more of these details onto the image. So I'm looking and I see this line here, so I've inverted hit my X key and I'm just going to do that. And I think that looks pretty good. Hit my X key again and start painting around here. Add in a little bit 
this way. Ah, there's that line again. So we're just going to paint that away. So let's look at the before. After looks pretty good. Let's manipulate this a little bit and just make sure that the details are popping. Yes, yes. I think that looks good before and after. So always open and close it so you can see what you're working with. I like that. That looks great. Okay, let's open this one. There could be elements of this one I might want to add. Definitely going to. Oh, yeah, up here. So we'll try that. Alt Option Mask. And again, we're just going to add by way of a mask. Just little pieces. Hit my X key when I want to paint off. Yeah, look at that. That's amazing. And so the beauty of using masks is you can flip back and forth with your X key, go to black and white, revi reveal and hide. I'm just going to add back a little bit more of this. Oh yeah, that looks good. So if you hold down your shift key and click mask, it shows you the whole picture. So I can take a look and see what I want to add. So definitely over here. So when you're making textures and creating elements that you can use for future use, you have to have a certain amount of control and you want to create images that are going to look great as a backdrop, right? Okay, let's take a look. What else do we need? That looks good there. So we need to add more of the details on the edge of this flower. I don't want it to carry on too far. That looks good actually. But we're just going to make sure we get these more contrasty details in. Oh, that looks so good. Doesn't this look amazing, guys? Okay, so this one here, I definitely need to come back to this one. I want to paint off some of the contrast because I want these flowers to pop but everything else looks really nice. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna paint a little bit more of the mat down here. And this is fantastic. Let's work with this, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this image. So what we need to do next is we need to add a texture over top and also probably a vignette. But isn't this amazing? So when you gigapixel any images, that means upsizing them, they don't typically end up as a 300 resolution. So I'm looking at the width and the height. So 9216 for height. I'm going to change my resolution to 300, but look at how that bumps that up. So I'm just going to go 9900 and click OK. Also, I'm going to change my profile to Adobe RGB 1998. I'm also going to change my bit to 16. And now I'm going to save this as a brand new image. All right. All right, I'm loving this so much, honestly. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna pop.
pause my video and I'm going to open a texture and we're going to play. So this is our beginning state for a background and I've opened up a couple of textures that I want to play with and just see what we get. So we're going to just grab our grab tool, pull this down and pull it on top. Put it right in the corner, transform tool and grab it down here. So there's several blend modes that you can use. I like to start with just using the normal blend mode and then reducing it to see if perhaps that works. So I'm going to hold my alter option key, click mask, and now I'm going to just really lightly brush it almost like a vignette because I do like the texture. I feel like it adds to the whole feel of this particular um, overlay, right? That looks nice. Probably reduce it a little bit more. Let's go ahead and grab this one as well. This one is a little brighter. So what I'm going to do is grab an adjustment layer, go to curves, clip it down here. If you look, and then I'm going to actually really deepen it. I'm probably going to change the color variation a little warmer like that. Just merge those two layers together like so. And then once again, Command T, we're going to transform this, drag it over like so. Change my blend mode to overlay. Soft light. Oh, soft light's good. Hard light. Let's definitely use soft light. Alter option mask. And now we're going to paint that effect around the edges. Ooh, look at how nice that is. Love it. I might actually paint it a little bit more over the entire image. Okay, this is so good, guys. Now I'm gonna go to another adjustment layer and go into my curves and really start tweaking the overall look of this particular floral texture. Okay, so that's all those. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten. Good job. Now I'm going to go into my selective color overlay blend mode, go to my blacks. So there's a lot of red in this, yes? So let's add some blue to those shadows, maybe a bit of magenta, mm, green, yeah, magenta, and then cyan. Good there. Let's go into our neutrals. We already have a a whole bunch of red so let's go to our greens maybe cyan go light on that that's pretty crazy a little bit of blue mm, no you just gotta play let's deepen that right about there go to our whites I think I want blue and cyan and reduce. So now we're going to reduce the whole entire layer before and after. I do think that looks better. Go ahead and flatten. Nice. Okay, so would this make a good backdrop? Mm, well, you got to make some adjustments. So let's go to our curves and we're going to add some matte which is going to make it a bit more workable. I still see that black point right there, but that's okay. Let's add a little bit of highlights. Good job. So that's before, that's after. Now, the reason that I do that is because when you drag this over an image, it's not going to be perfect. Um, it's usually better to have a little bit of matte added to it but this is still a beautiful, beautiful 
image for creating backgrounds. Next thing I'm going to do is add a gradient, but with the gradient, so if you have your white color showing here, that means your gradient will be white. So we need to change that gradient to something else. Make sure you click your layer, if you sample different colors. Okay, let's try it now. Gradient, we're definitely going to go radial. Wanted in the middle right there, dither, because we do not want it to be any banding. Reduce it. Change the blend mode to screen. Reduce it more. And you'll see if you double click this gradient, you can drag it up. So I really wanted to mat out that black point right there, which is perfect. So before and after. And this is, my lovelies, a perfect, perfect texture for use in overlays. Um, I might want to add another texture over top, so I'm going to grab this one again. And again, I'm going to pull it over, but instead I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. And once again, I'll command transform, bring it down like so, and adjust to suit. So about 23% is perfect. Okay, let's save this. Save, and next step, I'm gonna show you what this will look like on an edit. Okay, so I just wanted to show you how I took this initial edit of all of the AI images, and I created a floral texture, and this is what it ended up like. So I'm going to turn everything off and turn it back on so that you can see what I did. It was pretty easy. Okay, let's go here. So all I did was I dragged one of the images on. We'll go right to the bottom here. So I dragged one on and all I did was I masked off the hard edges and I used a cloud brush for that. So what does a cloud brush look like? So part of my favorite brush set has this cloud brush like so. And so all I do is I come in and I just use the cloud brush to get rid of the hard edges. Okay. So once I did that, I just duplicated the layer and started turning it, manipulating it, um, adding like adjustment layers, curves adjustment layers and then duplicating it flipping it horizontal and yeah you just apply each one and you create what looks kind of like a floral texture like this okay so those are the pieces and then I'll open up the adjustments all right let's take a look here so what I did next was I added this texture here and you can see I've got it on multiply blend mode at 71% opacity. Added a curves adjustment and in my curves, it was just trying to manipulate the contrast. And I also added, as you can see, a blue curves adjustment layer with a little bit of blue matting. Next, I added, uh, I'll just show you what this looks like. This is basically a kind of like a light leak overlay that I have and then I added another texture so this texture here soft light blend mode this is a texture from my uh, very first texture set and then a hue saturation adjustment layer just to turn those kind of green yellows a little warmer to red and then I painted over just with a basic uh, cloud brush some light pinks and light blues okay so this one here is just another um, it's another layer of this. So this is the that one. I pulled the whole thing on top and you can see I used an overlay blend mode about 50% and then I just painted it off the middle so that the edges would look more contrasty. Added another curves adjustment layer and close that. Now I painted on a little bit of just basic colors. This one was blues and a little bit of a magenta around the edges 
and we can see here that I probably could use just a little bit more in this corner. I like to just paint over the really black black areas with a color and that just kind of softens things and it doesn't look so so hard. Then I added some more. This is more of a like orangey gold. Another curves adjustment to get that contrast back. Hue saturation just to again adjust those colors a little bit like that. And this is essentially how I like to make my floral texture patterns and you can adjust the individual colors any way that you like or you can do it universally it's entirely up to you. I chose this old fairy portrait that I did um, a few years ago for a client and all I did now was I dragged my texture over top and you can see here it's a multiply blend mode I did mask just off my subject here then I duplicated that layer and this one I changed to a lighten blend mode and this is such a good way to get that contrast without using curves or anything but you can see here that I I have the same mask but now you can come in and you can really manipulate it make those edges around the flowers that you want in front of your subject hard so that it looks like it's actually in in front of your subject and this is probably one of the techniques that I love the very most and so to really complete this what I'll do now is add another blank layer change the blend mode to overlay and probably whatever color you think will work best but I'm going to go with a gold because we have a gold light here and I'm just going to add a little bit of that gold contrast more around this portion just because it's I want it to really look like it's cohesive and part of the backdrop so by using that overlay blend mode and um, choosing a color that really kind of suits the image you can really help tie it all in together like so right now you could come up here and do the same thing but I'm just gonna go to my reds and I'm gonna choose a red and just add a little bit more pop to those reds and this is how you can really personalize each image instead of just leaving it as is. I always end up going just a little bit further than probably most people would. So those are reds and yellows, okay? So I'm gonna do another one, another overlay blend mode, and now we're gonna work on our cool tones. So you can see if I sample this color, it's in the blue purples, but I want it a little bit more saturated, so I've gone up here and I'm just going to add a little bit more of this purpley blue color around and really try to make this look cohesive. Let's use a little bit more blue, something like this. And the reason why I did a separate layer on this one was because I really want to have the ability to manipulate the opacity if I want and I'm already happy with the opacity of of that one there but this one probably is going to need some work now I see the colors but I also feel like it needs something else I'm gonna probably go with more of a a green because I feel like we're really missing that pop of of florally green in this like so okay so now if I reduce this because it is a little heavy so that's before that's after I'm gonna add another one this one I'm gonna use a soft light blend mode and I'm still gonna stick with that kind of green just want a little bit more green in this image like so so don't be afraid to go back and really play and manipulate your colors and stuff because it does end up really looking cool Okay, this one I'm still not feeling it. I think I'm just going to get rid of that one. And that's just it. Sometimes you'll like it, sometimes you won't like it. 
I'm going to do another overlay blend mode and I think I'm going to use a lighter color of green. And don't be afraid to go over your subject because that little bit of green could really help too. Really pop those wings out. Yes. No, get down, baby. I'm going to go whiter because I really want this to be a little bit brighter up here. Just kind of making, it's almost like dodging and burning, isn't it? You can just add points of light using the overlay blend mode. Like so. Okay, so that's essentially how I do it. And what I like to do now is just duplicate the background layer, merge all of those together with a copy and you can see the difference, right? So also then you can just add a layer mask and paint off any of the texture that may have gotten on your subject's skin so that they look perfect, okay? And then you can do your basic uh, selective color, color toning so that the whole image looks a little more cohesive. You can choose what color you want for your blacks. Sorry, I have a little kitty baby that's trying to walk on my mouse pad. Nobody. Stay there. So something like that. Maybe even pull those blacks up a bit. Like so. Go to your neutrals. And we already have a fair amount of yellow and red. So if we went more cyan, pull that up just a bit and whites. I'm assuming we want to stick with the yellow. So yeah. So something like that, guys. And I'm going to paint back that warmth that we created here. Because I still want this left hand corner to be a little warmer than up here. Okay, so now, like I said before, I am actually going to give away this texture and um, would love to see what you do with it if you join my Facebook group. Additionally, there are, I have three invites for Mid Journey if you're interested in text to image fun little software on Discord. And all you have to do is comment below and I will select three lucky winners. Okay, so until the next video, you guys have a good one.